Hey, Internets. So today I'd like to talk about something I like to refer to as the authoritarian's fallacy. And just a quick clarification to get something out of the way, no, this is not the same thing as appeal to authority. This is something else entirely. What I'm talking about is this really bizarre, but also disturbingly common argument where someone tries to argue that something is good in an ethical manner because it is a law of the state or law of the land. Or in other words, the law says why, therefore why is automatically good. Now, fortunately, this doesn't need to be an absurdly long video because while it is a common fallacy, it's relatively easy to debunk because it's effectively just a circular argument. They are essentially saying that the law is ethical because it's the law, and it should be the law because it is ethical. And the law is ethical because it's the law, therefore it should be the law because it is ethical, and the law is ethical because it's the law, therefore it should be the law because it is ethical, and round and round their logic goes, where does it stop? Nobody knows. So that's kind of the most important thing to point out here. It's a very stupid argument. Very little time needs to be put into actually explaining what it is and refuting it, because it's pretty obviously dumb to any rational person if you just think about it for longer than 10 seconds. Just a basic study of philosophy will quickly teach you that ethics and state law are not automatically the same thing. And this is because ethics are tied to philosophy in a way that you can't really have a contradiction in them. And yet state laws are constantly changing in ways that contradict previous laws. So the people who are guilty of breaking the authoritarian's fallacy will find themselves having to defend some pretty silly things. For instance, technically, whenever a state carries out a genocide, that genocide is considered legal, simply because the state has stamped their seal of approval on it. So to say that ethics and state law are the same thing, you have to somehow argue that genocide is good when the state says so. Pretty obviously ridiculous. Again, any rational person can figure this one out. Oh, and by the way, the game for this rant is S Prism Destroyer. It's an indie game available on Steam in case you want to give it a try. Anyways, so I find that the inner workings behind why this fallacy is indeed a logical fallacy to not necessarily be as interesting as why people make this fallacy. Why people constantly make this obviously ridiculous argument. Because again, it's really, really common. It's strangely common. It's bizarrely common. It's almost disturbingly common. I'm pretty sure that just about anybody who sees this video can probably think of a time where somebody used this argument against you when you were disagreeing with something that the state was doing. And that's interesting because it's, again, a really obviously stupid argument. And yet, it's made constantly. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if most people watching this video have come across multiple examples of people saying that. You see it everywhere on the internet, you see it constantly in the media, you sometimes even see it in movies and shows. Law says so, therefore ethically good. So then that brings us to the question of why this lunacy is so common, and that's where things get interesting. And that's why I like to call it the authoritarians with an S fallacy. As in, it's a fallacy that is made by people with authoritarian thinking. You see, very few people are actually dumb enough to not understand that just because something is being done by the state, that doesn't automatically mean it's ethical. Pretty much everyone can figure that one out. What's happening here is a textbook example of intellectual dishonesty. People are approving of something that the state is doing for a reason that they don't necessarily want to personally disclose, usually because it's for some selfish reason like gaining power or screwing over the people they don't like. Since, of course, those kind of selfish reasons can't be defended ethically, they instead rely on the authoritarian's fallacy. So they'll make the argument that it's good because the state is doing it because they can't actually defend the real reasons that they believe it's good. So in that regard, the authoritarian's fallacy is actually a way that people with authoritarian tendencies are accidentally telling on themselves. They don't want to admit the real reason that they agree with the state on something, which is that they want to control you, and so instead they pretend to have an ethical reason by intentionally arguing in bad faith. They are trying to justify something which they don't really have a justification for, as a way of obfuscating their true motivations. Or in some cases, it's just a lazy person, someone being intellectually lazy and they don't really want to think about it. So they are just assuming that the state does have some kind of good reason for doing what they're doing. So it's entirely possible for the authoritarian's fallacy to be combined with an actual appeal to authority when coming from someone who just doesn't want to take the time to think for themselves. And that's the authoritarian's fallacy in a nutshell. Very few people are actually dumb enough to not understand why this is a fallacy. So whenever you see it, you're either dealing with someone who doesn't want to admit to their true authoritarian motives. Again, they just want to control you. You, or you're dealing with someone who's just a sheep. Anyways, the reason I'm bringing this fallacy up this month is because there's actually a pretty major recent event that has been unfolding these last few weeks with a feud between Elon Musk's Twitter, or X, and the state of Brazil. Here's a quick rundown for those who aren't already clued in. This Supreme Court judge, Alexander de Moraes, has ordered the X platform to be shut down in the country. And the reason why he's ordered X to be shut down in the country is because, unfortunately, Brazil doesn't really have very good free speech. If something is declared misinformation by the 
state of Brazil is equivalent of a ministry of truth, then legally it can be shut down. Now, the obvious problem with these kind of laws, as history has proven, is that the theory of misinformation being banned, actually banning misinformation, is a flawed theory because, of course, human beings can't actually decide things like that very well. What you end up with instead is some state bureaucrat with various political leanings deciding to censor things that they don't like. So it may or may not actually be misinformation. What ends up happening, of course, is that it's just whatever information the current regime doesn't like. And of course, case in point, the current ruling party of Brazil is the Workers' Party of Brazil which is a leftist democratic socialist party, of which the current president of Brazil, of course, belongs to. So, of course, surprise, surprise, very big shock, it's primarily the opinions of right-wingers that the Brazilian government wants to censor. And so they've been demanding that X provide the details of and ban certain members who are, again, of course, disproportionately right-leaning. And the reason it's become such a big feud is because Elon Musk has decided to essentially just give them the big giant middle finger. Musk has been spatting with this judge, and if you look at Musk's X feed, you can see that this has gotten pretty darn heated. The Supreme Court Judge Moraes has actually gone as far as to freeze Starlink's assets in Brazil, just purely through guilt by association. In fact, almost all of Musk's feed for the last week is pretty much just him laying waste on this judge. And needless to say, the decision is pretty darn unpopular. X being banned by by Brazil's communist red firewall, I suppose makes it so you now need a VPN to access X from Brazil. Pretty darn messed up, really. I mean, the idea of an entire nation being banned from using an extremely popular social media site by their own government is pretty insane. And so naturally, there's just tons of memes making fun of this guy. Plenty of people view Alexander for the authoritarian that he is. And there's even pretty good compelling arguments that what he's doing is actually not legal within Brazilian law, which opens up a whole nother can of worms. But for the purpose of this video, that's not really relevant. The state of Brazil is taking away their citizens freedom of association with associating with this media site X and that is not ethical it is a violation of people's property rights to tell people that you're not allowed to associate with this person under the threat of state aggression if you do not comply however because this censorship is coming from a leftist power structure there are in fact plenty of people out there who are actually trying to defend Alexander here and what reasoning do they all pretty much use well the authoritarians fallacy blaming Elon Musk for this instead of blaming the status pushing this censorship implying that this Brazilian judge is just automatically in the right because he's a judge. Which is, again, completely circular. You see, obviously they're not going to admit the real reason for why they believe Alexander's in the right here, which is that they want to use aggression in order to control the narrative, and that it's all entirely about power and political games. Very few of them are actually going to admit, yes, I just want them censored because they don't agree with me. Because, of course, that truth is bad optics. So instead, they resort to these various legal nitpicks about Brazilian law, and the circular argument that it's right because it's the law. And if you just look at a few examples of this, you can see for yourself how clearly dishonest and deceptive it is. You'll see quite a few accounts saying, hey, it's the law, so therefore it's good. It's Elon Musk's fault for breaking Brazilian law. And of course, if you click on these profiles, what do you see? You see trash lib politics, which of course is very interesting because if you're a liberal, you are supposed to believe in free speech as a principle. Not having the state get involved with what people are allowed to say, as long as it's not threats of aggression or actual calls to violence, is and has been a core liberal principle for over 100 years. And yet now, all of a sudden, mysteriously, these people don't believe in it anymore. I mean, it's really quite fascinating. One minute they believe in free speech, then all of a sudden when power is in their hands, they don't. It's almost as if they never really believed in it in the first place. And sadly, yeah, that's what's going on here. That's what the authoritarian's fallacy is all about. That's why they commit it. Again, it's pretty obvious that reasoning along the lines of this law is ethical because it's the law and it should be the law because it is ethical is completely circular and therefore nonsensical. Very few people are actually dumb enough to not be able to see through this one. So it's just authoritarians telling on themselves. They are trying to give you a bogus reason in order to avoid admitting their true, significantly less admirable reasons for why they have suddenly transformed from amicable liberals of ma free world into Brazilian state bootlickers. But to wrap things up, I'm going to focus on a bread tube example. Yep, that's right, everyone's least favorite horse lollicon Vouche actually committed this fallacy. There's a simple eight minute clip on his channel where he blames Musk and defends the Brazilian government because ma law. It's the law bro to just, just follow the law. Here's some quick clips so you just get the gist of what he said. Remember that dispute between Elon Musk and a Brazilian judge about their responsibility to block accounts who engage in hate speech that's unlawful in Brazil. Apparently the deadline is tonight. You know, Elon Musk is such a petulant whiny bitch that when confronted with literally just like threat of litigation, a very basic component of running a company of this size, lashing out at a judge, you know, 
Remember, Elon Musk is willing to censor critics of Erdogan in Turkey and then defend that decision on Twitter by saying, oh, if I didn't do it, Erdogan would have blocked me on Twitter or would have blocked Twitter in his country. What am I supposed to do about that? But blocking like Nazis and people who conduct hate speech, he won't do that even if it means all of Brazil gets blocked. But this is the most clear cut shit in the world. Brazil has a law uh, that prohibits certain types of hate speech or disinfo. Uh, Twitter initially said it would comply with banning people, but then didn't comply. And when pressed on it further, uh, Elon just like withdrew from Brazil. I think that like there needs to be consequences. I am so sick and tired of the European Union threatening Twitter every five days for like, hey, it's illegal to be a neo-Nazi, Elon Musk, and you are a neo-Nazi. Can you stop, please? And then nothing happens, you know, because they're too pussy to ban Twitter even though they should. And it, like that would be a, a compliance with their laws. So yeah, the main thing to point out here is that what Vush just did is a slightly better optics, but just as fallacious version of the authoritarian's fallacy, which is where they avoid specifically saying that it's good because it's the law. Instead, he just avoids talking about the ethics of the situation entirely and scuttles the conversation down into strictly of just what is legal and what is not, while of course calling the people he does not like Nutsi. But the reasoning here is still essentially the same. By not mentioning any kind of ethics on the philosophy of the situation, he's effectively implying that it's good because it's the law, without outright stating it because he knows knows that's actually really stupid to say. Instead, he replaced any kind of ethical talk with his standard false accusation against certain people of being neo nazis Also, if you're familiar with how the Turkey situation with Twitter went down, you might notice that Vush actually committed two additional reasoning mistakes in this clip. Whether or not Elon Musk is consistent on when he follows the country's laws regarding their censorship and free speech and whatnot is completely and utterly irrelevant to the question of whether or not Elon Musk is in the wrong here or if the Brazilian Supreme Court Justice Alexander de Moraes is in the wrong here. When of course the correct answer is that both the Turkey Turkish government and the Brazilian government are in the wrong here. But it's also a somewhat false comparison. The demands coming from Turkey were actually far less severe than the demands coming from this Brazilian Supreme Court judge. Erdogan gave Musk a much more sensible choice, which was a choice between restricting content to people in Turkey or having Turkey block X entirely. However, the content that was being visibility filtered to people in Turkey was still available on Twitter, so you could still see it in other parts of the world. Now that's still a state trying to force a private platform to censor people that the state doesn't like. So so that's still wrong. It is still a violation of freedom of association, but it's not as bad as what the Brazilian Supreme Court was asking, which was to actually ban those users' accounts from the site entirely, in addition to criminal investigations and litigation. It's a much more heavy-handed overreach, and again, pretty darn irrelevant because, again, just because it's the law doesn't mean it's ethical. So what Vush is really demonstrating here is that he, like, just pretty much every single person who calls himself a libertarian socialist is in fact just an authoritarian. They are fully on board with a state forcing draconian censorship laws onto private platforms, so long as those censorship laws are beneficial to leftist causes. It's just another big piece of evidence that these people don't really believe in freedom, but instead just believe in power. As long as it consequentially results in giving their political platform power, they're perfectly fine with throwing any kind of ethics into the trash. Because libertarian socialists are really just tankies who refuse to push their beliefs to their logical conclusions. And this is just one situation where we can see the mask slip and see them for the authoritarians that they are. That is what the authoritarians fallacy is really all about. It's about people who are hungry for power trying to gaslight you by utilizing intentionally nonsensical reasoning. They don't for a second really believe any of the words that are coming out of their own mouth. They just want power so that they can control you. It really is that simple. Anyways, that is all. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you really like my content, you can support me on Ko-Fi, Subscribestar, or by buying some merch. And also YouTube memberships are live. But yep, that's all I got to say for now. Till next time.